Good, good. Should get all of the comments this time. Okay, cool. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, good evening. I hope you're all doing really well. <laughs> I, I'm Ward. First spoon to you. Oh, it's actually like a spoon emote. That's amazing. Hi. Hi, Phoenix. First is overrated. Third is better. <laughs> hi, Philenos. Philenios. Artin, hi. Hello. Hi, Arnold. Okay. So. So, are you ready for the spiel? Are you ready for that, that thing that I do? Well, hello there. How's up? Okay, so basically, basically, we don't know what's in store today. We never know what's in store today. And that's the exciting part about this. Ooh, Phoenix? No, no, no. Like, oh, so, so Mort. Okay, so just disclaimer: if you don't see your chat in whatever you're talking to, like, I'm going to try and repeat the questions as they come in. But I am looking at YouTube. Twitch and Facebook comments all at the same time and I don't have it on the screen right now because I'm sorry. <laughs> I will I will work on that for the next stream, I promise. Um, but yes, don't be alarmed if I'm replying to somebody that is like a ghost in your chat box. Anyways, um, okay. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Ashley and I am a character artist and a character concept sculptor. I am going to be taking this sphere on these uh, streams that I do, like I always do, and I just kind of like mash it around into some random shapes and kind of just create a character or some kind of a creature that I think uh, fits those shapes and is a lot of fun to work with. Um, it's not referenced because this is just like an exercise, this is a sandbox session, it's not really something that I'm like, I have in my mind, oh, tonight I'm gonna do, you know, an alien bird that's like, you know, really specific or whatever, and then I'd have like a bunch of references for it. No, like I kind of just, I just kind of like wing it based on the shapes, and it's a good exercise for your imagination, which your imagination, by the way, as I say in every stream, is based off of things that you've already seen. You can't just make up anything out of thin air, right? So your imagination is strengthened through how much you put into your visual training. And so this is a great, a great opportunity to kind of break away from reference and just see what your imagination is able to do and where you can improve and what you need to be looking at later. And also, if you do like the concept that you just kind of like come up with and see what your brain connects uh, together, then of course, always go back and reference and make sure that your anatomy makes sense and that the, the concept is as strong as it possibly can be because you're always gonna miss things if you're not referencing. So again, like this is a rough sort of concept sketch just to do something quick and uh, and yeah, so just don't expect don't expect it to be something specific. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a concept. Hey Darren, hey Matu, hey Francisco, Scott, Math uh, Mateus, Fernando, how are you guys doing? As well as Jer, Imaginator, Cam, <laughs> and Conceptual Design. Hi guys. Sorry, uh, a little bit of allergies today. It's in the dog park for like two and a half hours. Oh my gosh, <laughs> your imagination sees only spheres. I know, that's basically all that's going on right here. Okay, let me see if I can get just the comment section for Facebook in this tab. Let me see. Hmm, doesn't look like it. Wait. Mm, no. Dang it. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> Hi everybody. Okay, we're gonna get started. We will get started here. Making sure all of my videos are paused on every single platform. So I don't start, he we don't hear myself like eight times. Because I've like retweeted this stuff and it's, yeah, it's playing everywhere. Okay, all right. <coughs> Spheres are cool, I agree. So if you have any questions on like what I'm doing as I'm doing it, feel free to ask. Um, I'll try and keep up with chat, no promises though, I might miss some comments. 
and I'll put up the um, sculpting theme uh, when I start to get a, a little bit of an idea of where I'm going with the sculpt. Okay. Hey Dean, hey Zachary, how are you guys? Okay, let's just do something here. just see if we can find some like cool shapes again I'm not really like sure what this is gonna be start off with like a pretty low resolution with Dynamesh because you know you're just like messing around with it. Will YouTube chat go wild today? I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a grab bag of randomness. It always, it always kind of is. <laughs> Did I change my song playlist? Um, I mean, I got it. So sneak during these ones, I have to get royalty free music, right? Because I'm on YouTube as well. And YouTube doesn't like it when you play music that isn't royalty free, royalty free. Triceratops almost. It's got a Triceratops vibe. Let's go with it. Thank you, Zachary. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like them. Hello, Ferris. Hi, Simon. Great, I'm looking forward to it as well. Do I start with a polysphere? Yeah, it doesn't really matter what primitive you really start with, though, because you're going to be mashing it up and, like, messing it up anyways, so who cares? <laughs> hi, du hi, Udo, Udom, Udom Sock. I'm sorry, I can't say your name very well. I'm so sorry. Uh, rhinoceros? Maybe Demas. In in light of the unfortunate news of uh, the passing of the last male right, white rhino, maybe. A little bit rhino inspired, actually. Maybe we should do that. Hi, Scott. Show you the way. <laughs> hey, Rogue Bear, how are you doing? How are you, how's everybody? Did I change the background color to black, darker color? It's, um... No, I usually use the same one right here. It's a pretty, it's a pretty dark uh, overall color, actually. It's like right down. It's maybe like 
Yeah, it's maybe like 90% gray. Did I do the Dynamesh first? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you do it first or you wait until a little bit later because you're going to be, um, yeah, you're, you're literally always going to be working around and messing around with the clay, so it doesn't matter when you Dynamesh. Hey, Pedro, how are you doing? You finally have a train ship, what do you mean? Oh, oh, cool, congrats, Sneak, that's awesome. Moose, yeah. <laughs> we need somebody who starts always with a spoon. Oh my god. get that really small so that my brush my brush will work a lot better here all right let's see Let's pull this guy out more. Get that in. Maybe get some back base masking on your on this guy. So something that a lot of people usually have problems with is um, the clay buildup brush. Ooh, that just got like really loud. Um, the clay buildup brush usually like. If you're if you're working without back, back face masking on, which is the default for a clay buildup, if you just start start doing this, it like pulls from the back. If you want to like fix that, just go to your brush palette menu, uh, scroll down into auto masking, and in auto masking, there's this thing right here called back face masking. If you click that, you won't have that problem anymore. No references? Nah, like it's just, it's a, it's a sandbox sculpt session. It's just for fun, right? So that's, it's like an exercise. What version of ZBrush am I using? I'm using the uh, most recent for 8P2. Oh, and Tylet, okay. Hi, hello. What am I modeling? Something random, something random. Hi, Diego. Wow, Peru, that's awesome. Make a Spoonosaur just for more. No, no, no. Hi, Headcase. 1 a.m. When will you fall asleep this time? Don't stay up too late. <laughs> Get your sleep. You want to change your gizmo arrows to spoons? You should. Absolutely, you should. And then put it, put it on your gum road. Hi, Eduardo. For a ZBrush training exercise, you decide to sculpt the bus of a... Of, uh, the Black Order from Infinity War. Oh, neat! Neat. Do you have those online? You're fanboying over the movie, yeah. Yeah, that's coming out soon, right? Hey, Fluffy. Yeah, it is. It's a pretty useful tip. How long have I been on ZBrush? I've been using ZBrush for uh, about four years now, something give or take a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Hi, Fernando from Spain. Why don't they just have it auto set to back face masking? Because here, I'll show you why. Let's say you pick something like the, um, the snake hook tool and then you put back face masking on. Well, that's no fun, is it? Uh-uh, that's not working like it should. 
now I'm not moving my stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool if that's, like, your intention, right? Like, you could just keep something on one side without moving it or masking it, and it stays. But that's not my intention. So it's the same as move tools and things like that. Like, not every tool works well with back face masking on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what Mord said. So you can actually save the brush out if uh, if you really want a back face masking to always be on. For me, I don't always want it to be on, so um, I actually just kind of keep I, I keep that in my UI. I just put the the clicker right here, the button. And uh, also another thing you might find interesting. So like if you're just getting into the program. I'd recommend just like, you know, picking up some brushes and just playing around with them. Doing like really random, random things. Like try back face masking on like certain brushes and try, you know, putting random alphas on certain brushes because you never really know what kind of crazy things you're going to get with that. Um, I, I, I found like a whole bunch of really neat tricks and stuff just by doing that sort of a thing. So I, I'd actually recommend you know, just playing around with the brushes, being a little bit free with them. Because there's like so many, so many things that you can do with this program is crazy. A lot of, uh, a lot of artists actually have this saying that um, for every problem, there's uh, eight different, nine different solutions in ZBrush in order to go around handling them because there are there are just so many different ways of doing it so I'm playing around with the front silhouette because I'm not really digging this right now thinking this whole middle part come back like that And I will take this, whoops, right here. Out of that, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. Sometimes, if it's not working, just kill it. That's uh, what I think. And then you can go back to it, add a new one. But just, yeah, just don't worry about it being, you know, perfect or anything like that. A lot of the time, you're gonna get something that just does not, just does not jive. You might wonder, well, how come you're not, you know, dynameshing right now? It's actually um, the reason why I don't dynamesh this kind of stuff right off the bat is because I like to get the artifacts. I really enjoy the artifacts that are left behind after dynameshing really like stretched and messed up overlapping geo and things like that. So I try and keep it.
Sorry if you hear a whole bunch of dish stuff in the background. Dragon. There's so many dragons that I've done. Thanks, Scotty. Appreciate it. Maybe it's just like getting clean UVs from the creature character, character, creature. Sorry, creature concepts. Um, clean UVs. Just try and like. Well, that depends. Like, are are your creature concepts going for film or games? Games. I. Uh, you might have a little bit of a harder. Well, no. Like, okay, so basically just kind of do what do what you do with all characters, right? Um, with the face, just make sure you have really clean topology and just cut scenes where you don't think it will be deformed. Um, that's really it, is just like try and have really clean topology that makes sense with deforming areas and you'll get clean UVs. Like, I don't really know about like, you know, sp special like tips and tricks for creatures specifically. YouTube deleted your message posting Z Classroom because spam? Really? I'm sorry. Oh my god, okay, don't... That's another one. In... Okay, I have to try and ban that guy in uh, the Pixelogic chat. Hold on. Sorry, I'm like playing like mod at the same time here. It's hard. Custom making menus? I actually don't use the custom menus that much. How you start to learn because you can be a new artist. Yeah, what Mord was trying to post, so zclassroom.com. Zclassroom.com, and you can see that. How many resolutions are you usually using when I activate Dyn Dynamesh? Um, honestly, that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what resolution you work at. It depends on the size of your model and what kind of detail you're trying to get in. Um, at default, like if you just use a sphere out of the box, like a like something like this out of the box, and uh, and then you go down to like 40 and Dynamesh it. That's about what I do, like right off the box. But it doesn't it doesn't matter because like watch this. Okay, I have to demonstrate this like constantly because people don't actually realize that the resolution thing here is relative to the size of your of your model so and what i mean by that is here watch this so this one's going to be a really big sphere this one's going to be a middle sphere and this one is going to be a really tiny sphere and we're going to put polyframe on all of them so you see up here they all have the exact same resolution these ones are really big though because it's a really big sphere whereas this one's really tiny because it's a really tiny sphere so, if I were to put, you know, 100, or let's just say 40, because I don't want my computer to explode right now. So, if I say 40 and I say Dynamesh this one, all of a sudden it will create, like, it will create resolutions according to the size of that model in this space, right? So, this one actually looks like it's got almost the same size as this one, or at least this middle one, right? And this is because it's default. So if I say, you know, Dynamesh this one at 40 as well, it pretty much stays the same because it's like, that's the generic, that's the general shape or the size rather. Whereas this one, you get less resolution. So if you wanted the smaller one, if your models are smaller, then you want to increase the resolution in order to get more. This one, it's just, it's just the same. But then this one, watch what, what happens when I say 40 resolution on this one and I say Dynamesh. It's thinking. Oh, this was 640, my bad. Hold on. <laughs> 40. Hold on, gotta go back. Gotta go back in time. I didn't mean to do that. The slider wasn't detached. Okay, 40, and then you Dynamesh, and you can see it actually added more resolution than before, right? So it depends on the size of your model. And so what I would say is just keep 
playing with the sliders and dynamashing to see what kind of resolution you get. Like, let's say this one, you wanted more resolution. Well, then 40 wouldn't work for this one. You can try something like, you know, 200 and dynamash it. And okay, well, then there you go. Now you're getting a lot more resolution, right? And so that's basically... That's basically what you have to think about when you're working with the, the Dynamesh resolution. It's not like, oh, well, what resolution are you working with? Like, it doesn't matter what I'm working with. It's case specific. So hopefully that answers a whole bunch of your questions about that stuff. Make it explode, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna go with this. Hi, Joel. No worries, Fong. Thank you, Marco. I appreciate it. Just curious, anybody know the name of the band that is playing? Um, right now, I'm not sure what the band is called, but it is a... I don't know. Let's see if I can actually, like, message. Hold on. I'll send you the playlist that I have together here. Um, hi, JC. How are you? On Facebook. Here you go. Yeah, his neck lifts. <laughs> yeah, I use Substance Painter for texturing. Oh, awesome, Tiburn. I really appreciate it. Am I, I, I am using a tablet. I'm using the Wacom Intos Pro Medium.
on a model now as well. How often am I doing them live? Second time I've seen you. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. EST, I'm here on the Pixelogic channel. Um, but on my own channel, hey, are you guys ready? <laughs> are you ready for a flyby? Somebody prompted it. Somebody prompted it. Okay, ready? My own channel. Whoa, holy crap. It's over here. <laughs> this one right here is my own channel and I'm there on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. EST as well. So go ahead and check that out. And while you're at it, follow the Pixelogic channel because there's a ton of other really, really awesome artists with different, um, different workflows from my own. So if what I'm doing is not your cup of tea, fret not. There's lots of others that will probably have your brand. So definitely give them a follow and check out, uh, check out all of that. Cause they're good. <laughs> What's the playlist? I, I put the playlist in the, oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, the playlist, here, hold on. Put it in Twitch chat as well. I don't have YouTube open though, so I can't do that. Sculptures is perfect for starting point. I mean, why don't you just, okay, so here's another thing is ZBrush actually offers a 45 day free trial if you wanted to try out ZBrush, but you didn't want to like, you didn't want to commit to it just yet, which is totally understandable. They offer 45 days for free, so you can basically in that time know if you love it or hate it, which usually you'll find that it's pretty addicting. Uh, how important is RAM? You're running a 4 gig Surface Pro. I'd say you need some more RAM. I'm running 16 gigs. It is pretty important for this. Like, I mean, you don't need a ton of it. Like, again, like, I'm running 16 gigs, and it's just fine for me. So I'd say, yeah, you need some more RAM just than 4 gigs. Um, graduated five months from full sale. That same pro- Oh, nice! Oh, thanks, Mord, for, uh, <laughs> for spamming my stuff. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Of course, I'm going to respond to as many people as I can. I've known ZBrush for many years, but you saw it I'm working on it last night. You really want to get started? Nice, Joel! That's awesome to hear! That's actually really awesome to hear. That makes me really excited. That's really cool. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. I had symmetry on this. So I, that's not what I want. There we go. Um, let's see, the theme, oh, there we go. I don't know, did I do a rhino theme before? I feel like I have. <laughs> oh well, whatever. It's just a, it's just a jump off point anyways. Is my inspiration um real life nature i love i love nature obviously i'm on art station a lot so i see a lot of other tons of artists so i can't really like pick one and tell you oh. yeah no worries james uh they won't tell you a software to use instead of the final touch book out oh. <laughs> more sacrifice friends in discord Hey, yeah, I have a Discord if you want to join it, for sure. It's uh, it's it's got quite a few people in it actually.
We gotta work on this thing. Why creatures and no princesses? Uh, because I actually worked on making princesses for a while for my job. And I mean, I enjoy it in a different way, but I really enjoy working on creatures and stuff. I've always really kind of enjoyed the weird critter critters and like creatures and bugs and like monsters and dinosaurs like since I was a little kid um, but my first job I actually got working on Barbie Starlight Adventure which was about Barbie as a space princess basically um, as a character artist I got to work on Barbie and all of the other ones and then after that one I jumped onto Disney's Elena of Avalor and I got to work on Elena uh, so a Disney princess and like I got to work on a whole slew of other characters because there was like hundreds in that show which was insanity um but yeah like i've i've had the experience of making princesses already and i just i don't know i like doing this in my free time you know have i ever done any real character what do you mean real character what do you mean what do you mean by that Good. I don't understand. Nice of me to know. Check out next Twitch next week. Oh, thank you! Thank you, Travis. I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, where can you see my artwork? Um, I can just like copy and paste the thing that Mord, <laughs> Mord pastes for me. Oh my god. Bless his soul. Ah, it won't let me copy it. Why? <laughs> Dang it, hold on, give me a second. Oh yeah, there it is, there it is, I see it. There we go, now I can copy it. Just copy that and just send it over to Facebook. Just send it over to Facebook. Here you go, here's my info. Enjoy! <laughs> Enjoy that! I worked on a Barbie Dreamhouse TV by any chance? No, 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 I worked on a movie, Barbie movie. Yeah, Barbie movie. <laughs> oh, you worked on a Barbie as well, Tiburn? That's cool. I feel like a lot of people have, have touched that franchise. A lot of people have done stuff. Hi, uh, Car. How are you? XX Car. Um, hi, Dynasty. <laughs> Is Bigfoot real? I don't know, but hello. <laughs> Why do you feel like you know this guy? I don't know, Spaceship. How are you doing, though? Hi, Osama. Doing well, doing well. Um, let's say it's a rhino princess. It can be a princess, why not? Hello, YouTube. You feel a lot of pressure when working at a professional level? Ah, uh, no, no. I feel like my artistic skill is what it is and I'm always striving to get better and so any pressure that I might feel, I try to dismiss as like, well, I'm doing my best, so if it isn't good enough, I can always talk to an art director or my project manager and they will talk with me and we can work something out because that's, that's supposed to be what a healthy relationship inside of a studio is, is that you have full communication with your team and you're able to establish where your boundaries lie and where you need improvement. And, you know, if you're excelling at something, then you get more tasks uh, for that thing, etc. right? So I don't feel like there's a ton of pressure unless like you're on overtime, 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 and they're being toxic. You know, there's companies that are not so great in terms of um, understanding 
the boundaries that you need and you you know you have and trying to like you know guilting you into working more hours than you're getting paid for or whatever in that case that's no good and yeah you're, you're gonna feel pressure for that but that's like you need to know when to draw the line so yeah did I get an internship to Disney and where am I based? No, I didn't get an internship to Disney. I was work uh, when I was working on the Disney thing, I was actually in Toronto and um, like the the company that I was working for is now in the ground. Like it's done. It's went bankrupt. So Hi Heather. Oh, your next gig is gonna be Barbie TV. Nice save room. Hi Lopez, thank you. No, I don't speak Spanish. Sorry, Hernandez. Sorry, JC. Hey, Danny Mac! How are you guys doing? Guys, er, how are you? <laughs> Danny Mac is suddenly multiple people. Um, if you guys don't know Danny Mac, you should definitely go and check him out on, uh, on, on Twitch, but then also YouTube. He's doing like these 60 second tutorial things, and they're really, really helpful. They're really great for, um, not just beginners, but like anybody Anybody who wants like some extra tip that they might not have thought of before because his workflow is actually quite um, quite different from somebody like me. He works with uh, with clean topology all the time and tries to avoid Tidemesh from what I've seen. From what I've seen. Um, but yeah, you should definitely go check him out. I'll also wish Danny Mac a happy birthday because every day is Danny's birthday. You love rhinos? That's awesome! I feel like I haven't really been working that much, I've just been like chatting. You know, oh, surprise, surprise! <laughs> chatty, chatty, chatty. Oh my god, more, please. <laughs> I'm not gonna speak Spanish, no, sorry. Easiest way to make perfect edges that don't look wobbly? Um, for me, I would say the pinch tool. Watch this. Watch this. Wow! What do you know? It's a perfect straight edge. Pinch tool is gonna be your friend. So, what happens with the pinch tool? Well, it just brings all the topology to this one edge, so then this will be really dense. So if you actually smooth it out, you're going to get a very hard surface look. Very, very hard surfacey. So, that's one way. And you can also reverse it to do opposite as well. Oh, no worries, Daniel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I can't speak other languages and I'm a noob like that. Ew, don't blush, Danny. That's disgusting. <laughs> no winky faces either. Really like the street? Oh, thank you. That's great. He's a god. Well, Danny's his own god. <laughs> How long did it take for me to learn ZBrush? Oh, jeez. Um... I, mm, I don't really know. I like I say that learning the interface, I probably took like a month total to get really comfortable with it. Maybe. I don't really know because like I I was learning it at such like a um like you know my own pace because I was going to school for animation at the time. Like I wasn't like I wasn't dedicating myself to it, so it's hard for me to actually like tell you how long it took me to learn it, but I can tell you for certain that it wasn't too difficult for me to actually um, pick up because like I was just kind of like playing with it and it still sort of made sense to me. So if that's any solstice or why did I say solstice? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Some of the things that I say, I don't really understand. Have I met Joseph Dress? No, I have not met Joseph Dress. <laughs> Will this be archived anywhere? Yep, you can go and see it on uh, the YouTube channel, Pixelatrix YouTube channel.
Hi, German. How are you? Okay. Oh my goodness. There's so many messages. How was Mexico? It was really, really good. It was really good. Like, honestly, like, I don't really know. Like, it was amazing to meet so many other artists. It was very inspiring. And I, I felt really humbled talking to all of the other students that were there. I just, I felt like really excited all the time. I was excited about art, excited about just making stuff and drawing and everything. It was just a really great experience. And I think, I think in general, I, I was really, really happy um, that that other people like kind of, <laughs> how do I say this? Like they were just like so excited to learn. I think that's that's the big thing is a lot of a lot of the time in schools like in North America like from what I what I've seen anyways a lot of a lot of kids feel almost like because they're going to school and I don't want people to take offense to this because it's going to be very opinionated here okay this is very my own opinion not Pixelogix my own opinion so a lot of a lot of people um, that I've seen anyway in North America uh, they feel like oh I'm going to school. I deserve to have this job when I graduate. There's a very like entitled aura that a lot of uh, grads kind of like have about them. Um, I'm not saying everybody either. I'm just saying like they're like I've noticed that. And then when I was in Mexico, like everybody just sort of seemed really like humbled. Everybody was like you know really excited to learn and like you know they're just like yeah I know it's difficult and I'm gonna really really try and they you can see that they're really really trying and I thought that, that was really admirable and I was just like really excited for them and it just made me want to like help them even more and just kind of like do art with them and everything because everybody was just so like it was like a passion right it wasn't like oh I'm just going to school because I don't really know what I want to do I'm not taking like art class because I don't know what I want to do so that was really cool. I think that was the biggest thing that I, I, I noticed and I was like, that this is awesome. This is really, really amazing. Do I use my imagination uh, for, or do I use my imagination more or reference material when designing characters? I, both, honestly, it really depends on uh, the project. So for something like this, this is just like sandbox sculpting. It's just for fun. I'm not really like using this for anything, but if I were to, then I would definitely use reference uh, to make it a stronger sculpt. But because this is just sort of, um, this is just like, like whatever, I'm just doing whatever. Uh, it's, it's fun to just do it from my imagination and just kind of like relax. Well, thank you, German. I don't think it's, it's not perfect, but I, I appreciate the compliment. Mike Pavlovich taught you ZBrush. Yeah, he's amazing. Go and check him out on YouTube as well. He also streams here on the Pixel channel sometimes. Uh, I haven't caught a stream from him recently. He might be really busy. Okay, let's see. Um... Thank you so much, Joel. I really appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Thank you. What made me want to swap animation for modeling? Um, I think it's just... Okay, so I was in school for 2D animation. And I really like drawing. Like, and I really like drawing dynamic things. I like drawing keyframes for animation. I like telling stories. And that whole thing kind of, like, drew me into 
animation in the first place and I was really excited about that but then when I started doing things like you know in Toon Boom and like kind of cut and paste animation and stuff like that and learning that stuff and just realizing that a lot of uh, the jobs out there for animation was like cut and paste Toon Boom type things I realized that that's not really like what I like to do um, I wasn't really jiving with that that well I like the hand-drawn process but I'm not like I don't like in-betweening, I don't have the patience for that kind of a thing, and it just didn't feel like that was really what I wanted to do. And maybe if I had different teachers, it would have been a different experience or whatever, but um, yeah, I just, I, I kind of just like fell off of it once I, like, I found ZBrush. Um, my now boyfriend actually was taking a, a class for it. And, uh, and I was like, you know, what the heck is that, right? Because he was just literally like, throwing around clay and it was like it like in like as you can see like the way that I'm doing it he was just kind of like doing whatever and I was like oh I want to try that what is this program and he told me what program it was and then I started like just messing around with it like I didn't even like look up anything online or whatever I just kind of like when I first started I just like started messing with it based on like oh here's your five brushes that you should use that he told me about and I, and I was just like messing it looked really bad everything that I did was really bad but it was so fun like I just found that so so fun and I started sculpting before I really started modeling and after I, I started getting like actual sculpts I realized that you can re apologize them and then you can actually bring them into like another program and everything and I just started like my whole world like exploded from there and I was like whatever animation I I have a better path like that's just sort of what was going through my mind um but it doesn't mean that I think animation is worse or anything like that it's just not my thing it's just not something that I personally enjoy as much as just kind of sitting down and creating characters I still finished my schooling though, like I still finished, I, I got my degree and everything like that, so. So there's nothing, nothing there, I still made a, a film, like I still, <laughs> the animation was just like garbo though, because I just didn't care about being an animator so I didn't put any effort into it at all, I was just like, it was just really not a good, <laughs> it was just not good. If previous me, like past me, um, knew about about that before I went into school, like, oh, you're not even gonna do animation, <laughs> I would be like, girl, you're wasting your money. <laughs> what my first creation in ZBrush was? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. I I might be able to find it. Sandbox sculpting. Yeah, it is a great- yeah, it's basically what it is. <laughs> this music makes everything I say sound inspirational. I mean, hmm. <laughs> good choice then. Yeah, no worries, side effects. Tropical island of Dominican Republic. Hello, Daniel. You want to be in a sandbox now, though? I mean, it's technically a sandbox if you color it the sandbox color. An adult one, not a beach. <laughs> Your journey from 2D to 3D. Yeah, a lot of people have gone through the same sort of process, right? Like you think that you want to do something, you go to school for it, and you're just like, what am I doing? 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 <laughs> you know, and it just becomes like an existential crisis that you just do like a, you know, 180 and whatever. Here you are. It doesn't matter. Just kind of like go with the flow. You're just gonna, you know, who cares? <laughs> hey, Menthol, how are you? get back to ZBrush, you've been focusing on other things? Yeah, well, I mean, as long as you're getting through life. Any tips for aspiring 3D sculptors for getting into the industry? Um, don't just sculpt. Don't just sculpt. Like, finish, like, some, some models. Like, actually finish, like, through the pipeline, start to finish. Like, I know I'm not, like, a huge like uh, role model for that sort of a thing because yeah like a lot of my portfolio that you see online is just sculpts but again like I'm more of like a concept artist like I do 3d modeling I have had 3d modeling jobs and I understand topology I understand texturing I, the last job that I was at I was also a surfacing artist I did UVs all that kind of stuff but the thing is like your portfolio needs to reflect that right mine don't look at mine as like an example for that sort of thing 
but you do need to have um, finished models for getting into the industry. Absolutely. My portfolio when I first started actually had like a bunch of finished models like with topology and everything and I just like canned them because I was just like, ooh, this stuff does not look, it does not look up to par to what I can do now. So I just like chucked it out of my, out of my uh, art station. Uh, <laughs> I am the hairy lady. I'm very hairy. <laughs> How are you doing, Rice? Hi, Jean. Hi, Sirius. Yeah, I gotta get back to sculpting. I've been talking so much. Hello, South Texas, Esteban. Oh, man, doing great. Doing great. That's excellent. Excellent. All right. Do you guys mind if maybe I just focus a little bit here? sculpt horses in real life nancy that's cool that's awesome traditional sculpting is always really great i love traditional sculpting i don't have a lot of space for it i need to get like another table put it behind me and do some some monster clay stuff but that's awesome that you do that there we go. i'm just saving right now guys if you haven't saved your work save it Yeah, I've heard that, Artin. I've definitely heard that TV paint is, uh, is, is more enjoyable, but I don't know. I don't know if that's really, like, something I want to jump back into. You're Bob Ross, a happy little man eating. <laughs> hey, happy accidents can happen in 3D too. Hey Adam, it's a Pixelogic mashed potato plugin. <laughs> Hi VPN. Hi Friedrich. You always cringe to retop properly. Ah, it, you know, it just takes it takes patience. Take some, uh, take some practice as well. Okay, Jay. Focus. I know, I know. I just, like, I keep losing focus. Like, it's just... <laughs> when so many comments are coming in at the same time and you're trying to, like, do something. It's a, it's a hard life. I live a hard life. No.
All right, let's see. Uh, Chad Reno's um, graduating from wholesale as an animator next month. Oh wow! You sculpt sculpting is the path that you chose. Gotcha. Nice. Awesome, Esteban. Paying to learn 3D modeling is like paying to learn how to drink water. I, well, no, I wouldn't say like I wouldn't say that. I really wouldn't. Like, yeah, there's like a lot of uh, a lot of information online now for for learning how to 3D model and texture and sculpt and just use a whole bunch of different programs and it's all free. But the thing is like, you do know which questions to ask. Do you, um, you know, are you self-motivated enough in yourself to sit down and spend the, you know, handful of hours every single day learning this stuff and if you're not, which is totally understandable because for the longest time, like, I didn't have any self-control when it came to telling myself, no, 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 today I'm going to, like, do this set amount of work or whatever. Now I'm a little bit better, but, um, you know, when I was when I was around the age of going to college, uh, that was that was like a little bit difficult for me. So I actually needed the schools telling me, like, do your do this work, do this work, do this work. And yeah, I wasn't really like learning from the school I was still learning on my own but they were telling me that there were deadlines they were like there was something expected from me and 
it was sort of like you know you're paying for that structure you're also paying for um, the people that you meet and the networks that you create while you're actually in school I'm not saying that like I'm an advocate for absolutely you gotta go to school art school uh, or anything like that because I don't actually think that you need to go to art school but it depends on the type of person you are right so you have to really like look inside of yourself and just see like oh well do I need that structure or am I able to be self-taught right that's that's sort of the difference hi Alex <clears throat> Focus! <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. This is the Pixelogic official channel, yes. Yes it is. Yeah, the gizmo is awesome, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Good night, M Black. Have a great night, thanks for stopping by. Look in your heart, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, Kinder Eggs. Kinder Eggs! Yeah, the learning deadlines and process sort of thing, and also learning what you don't like, right? Um, that was something really important to me. Uh, I, cause yeah, like you, like I, I told you, like I went to school for animation and I learned that I don't want to do that. I mean, that's something that you, <laughs> that you'll be able to figure out on your own at home through um, learning on the internet of, uh, as well. But it's like. It just, I don't know, I like I can't really say if it's like overrated or underrated. I think it's too expensive for what it is, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but in terms of, uh, you know, finding 
finding out who you are and things like that. It, like, it's a process, right? Like, some people, some people will actually find it very valuable, and some people will just be like, I, nothing happened during the entire thing. So it just, again, like I said, it's really comes down to who who you are as a person and I'm not going to be able to answer that for you I can only tell you that for me I try to value as much as I can what I was able to gather from going to school but I can't tell you that it got me the job that I got right out of school I can't tell you that it helped me learn 3D but I did meet a lot of really great people. So.
Hey, Mincho, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, let's see. Mm -mm. One day, people will be able to clone species facing, patient, blah, 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 facing extinction. Yeah, I agree. It would be really nice. Yeah, I, I chose it because, you know, in light of the recent um, unfortunate news of the last white male rhino passing, I just figured, you know, like, hey, let's do something rhino related. Because, like, honestly, like, it's really messed up that, that that's even, like, a thing. Like, why, why can't we just preserve, preserve these guys? It, yeah. yeah, I don't really, like, have words for it. I just think it's messed up. And uh, that's why I chose the theme, because it just, yeah, it's really, really crappy news. Hey, Little Ginger, how are you doing? Yeah, Jacket Buttons, you're also in the same, same boat. Yeah. Hi, Addy. Hi, Magic. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Pre-Drag. Yeah, definitely networking is a big part of going to school. Why looking so sad? It's my resting sad face. I always look sad because I'm not, like, trying. It's just my natural self. Sad. And in an existential crisis. No. <laughs> hey, Frodo. Want to know if it's not a personal question? How was my very first job, and how did I get it? I got it. Um. Okay. So my first job was on Barbie Starlight Adventure. Ooh, one sec. This was. This was my first job, right here. Well, no, I mean, like, this was, it was for the movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling out my Barbie. Uh, this was, um, uh, it, it's a movie, a Barbie movie. And um, they, uh, so I got to work on the main character for the movie and everything like that for a bunch of other characters as well for the movie when I first started working at ARC. Um, and ARC Productions doesn't exist anymore. It went under, but when I was working there, this was the first project that I got to work on and they made a toy out of the Barbie outfit that was in the movie, of course. So I, they ended up giving all of us like a Barbie at the end of it for saying, thank you so much for working on it. So now I have, I have a Barbie. <laughs> so that's kind of awesome. Um, but yeah, the way, the way that I got it, uh, the way that I got it was, I was, uh, it, like, I was in school for animation, 2D animation, and I, um, there's, like, this thing at the end of the year called, uh, what's it called, uh, Industry Day, and all, like, so basically in fourth year you're supposed to make your final film, like a cumulative effort of everything that you've learned and I didn't do that. I like, yes, I made a fourth year film, but it wasn't like to do with like 2D animation or anything. I made a 3D film. So I like, I modeled and braved and I did like the entire thing, which is like a nightmare for somebody who doesn't know anything about it, but I did it. And, um, and there weren't anybody, like, there wasn't anybody at that industry day that was going to, like, really, like, hire me. They only, so, yeah, like, again, like, they weren't sending, like, modelers looking for, you know, modeling positions or anything. They was just all, like, you know, animators, right? And I didn't want to be an animator, but, um, Arc Productions was there. There were a couple of animators who were sent there, you know, just to see if anybody would be interested in trying 3D animation, even though we were in a 2D animation uh, school, which I mean, yes, like there were a few other people that were doing like 3D animations from bot assets and stuff like that. 
And I went up to them and I was just like, hey, 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 you know, and I started bugging them. And they were like, we can't help you, just apply online or whatever. And I was like, okay, okay, whatever. And then there was a job fair a couple days after that and they were there. And so I went up to them at the job fair and I was stuffing my portfolio in their face. I was like, hey, 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 hey. And, um, and then eventually after bugging them so much and sending emails and emails and emails, eventually I got contacted and I got a job. And, well, after a really bad interview, but, you know, <laughs> it ended up happening. So that's basically how that happened. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm catching up on comments. Yeah, my path is really good for learning ZBrush. Could I say something about this? Uh, are you doomed if you can't learn new graphics programs on your own? I, I mean, I wouldn't say that extreme. Um, you can learn new graphics programs on your own though. Like. There's so much, there's so much information out there, Max. There's like, okay, so if you want to learn ZBrush, go to zclassroom.com. Um, there's also Michael, Michael Pavlovich and like a, like a slew of other artists out there that are just like putting stuff out on YouTube for ZBrush and Maya and Max and Moto and it's like, it's like constantly ongoing. If you want to be a games artist, you know, or even just like learn general modeling workflows, just go into Polycount Wiki. You know, like there's so much information there and it's just, you, you can learn these programs just by, you know, being online. How I get into ZBrush is kind of hard to get into it. Um, okay, so I would say just, you know, jump into it and start messing around. Really, that's like the big thing is try to have fun with it. Don't, don't put pressure on yourself. Um, that's a big one. When I first started, uh, you know, doing stuff in ZBrush, I literally just kind of, I wasn't really like showing my stuff to everybody or anything like that right off the bat. I was just like tr messing around with it and trying to have some fun. It wasn't, um... It wasn't serious when I first started. And I'd say get into Z Classroom and check out the tutorials they have there. say that Andrew um, actually I think that the degree that I got doesn't actually pay a big it doesn't play a big part in in what I do now um, if I wanted to get a job in a different country then I'd say yeah it, it it does because then it would be easier for me to apply to things like visas but like I wouldn't say that it was used to enslave me I don't, I don't feel like I am enslaved.
no, I don't think a job is enslavement. It's um, it can be a little bit more um, taxing than it needs to be in certain situations. But I wouldn't say it's enslavement because you always have the opportunity to leave. <laughs> I guess it all just boils down to, like, how do you think about capitalism, right? <laughs> you could say that to, like, literally everything. You know, those that are given lots of opportunity right off the bat might think of it as... maybe enslavement in certain... certain situations, but then, you know, the people who haven't been given those opportunities right off the bat would be very grateful for the same thing, so... It just comes down to what you think about capitalism. Yeah, you can get a 45-day uh, a free trial, Timothy. The fruit falls down on its own. <laughs> Easier to find gigs, although I'm not sure if you lived elsewhere and had a chance to compare. Um, in Toronto, I was uh, I got jobs very, very quickly. Um, and it seems like there's a lot of work here in Montreal. I'm not currently like actively looking for work, so I can't really like tell you for certain, but from what I hear, like, yeah, there's like tons and tons of work here. Um, I'm just kind of like taking a break after my last contract and seeing where my own personal work takes me um, before before looking again. You know, just to, just to relax. <laughs> Shark Tank with scientists at Cliff Force watching you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not I'm not held captive here. <laughs> this is a volunteer sort of thing. I don't get paid to do this. This is just because I really enjoy sculpting and I wanna I wanna share it with everybody. Um <laughs> Mav. Oh my god. Oh, it doesn't give you notifications? It's okay, Khalil. I mean, I've only been- oh my god, I've only been live for an hour and a half. Like, it's hardly like anything. My thoughts about the pros and cons of creating concepts in 3D rather than 2D. Um, I'd say, uh, when it comes to thumbnailing, um, and like, you know, just like, just thumbnailing in general, 
2D, like, sketching something. Like, if you need to, like, really quick, like, you know, you have, like, you have, like, two hours to get, like, a couple of concepts down, like, you know, and you're in a rush, then 2D will always, always be faster than 3D. Um, and so if you have the ability to draw, that's awesome because you can be sitting in a boardroom meeting or something and just, like, pick up a napkin and just, like, quickly sketch something out. And in that case, yeah, like, 2D sketching will always be faster. And I'm not even just talking about napkin drawings either, like just in general, if you have somebody beside you and they want like a whole bunch of ideas like really, really fast, and if you're able to draw, then that's going to be faster. But when it comes to something to get approved really quickly, um, the pros of 3D concepting is yes, it is, it's pretty fast. You actually can do things very quickly as I have demonstrated in previous streams. Um, and, and you get like a more finished result that look like, you know, for the same amount of time, you can get something that's more accurate to what you want the final representation to be. Uh, your lighting is all there. Your forms are accurate to, uh, to real world perspectives and things like that. So in that case, like 3D concepting trumps just 2D alone because it would take a long time to render all of that out in 2D. But again, if you're just doing like line art, quick like sketches and stuff, then 2D is a lot faster. But I would say that concept art is moving and has already moved in the direction of 3D and uh, doing 3D models, 3D sculpts in ZBrush and like, you know, just just doing paint overs of it afterwards. So that's what I would, I would say for sure. <clears throat> you struggle in 2D, but you find yourself that you can translate your ideas much better in 3D space. You, that's okay too. It's just um, you know, if you want to be a concept artist, you just start getting you start getting faster. Kumar, how do you make money from streaming? I don't know. I still don't really make money from streaming. <laughs> I mean, I make a little bit on my own channel. This is on Pixelogic. I don't I don't make money here. This is just a uh, volunteer. Um, <clears throat> but on on my own channel, uh. If you get subscribers, you can make a couple of dollars per person if they want to subscribe and support your stream, which I appreciate all of my subscribers, but it's not like, I don't know. At this point, for me, I can't live off of it. We'll see about that in the future, but it, um, it basically right now I can pay for my phone bill because of Twitch, <laughs> which is very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, you get paid an exposure here. Um, if uh, <laughs> I get paid an ex everybody here, uh, you realize that you're you're gonna be a part of Exposure High, Exposure High School. There is no money here. This is a uh, 100% all for all for exposure. to hold those big arms. Let's see, where...
Hi, Logiseth, how are you? Exposure prime points. Um, Mr. J, I uh, I don't I don't agree with that. I've seen plenty of sculptors that are really really talented modelers um, and sculptors that can't draw very well at all. So. Competitive sculpting scene, right? Yeah. The laundry pots. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you, Ralph. I appreciate it. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I think I'm going to take a break here and then I'll be back to finish off the rest of the stream, which is going to be another two hours and 15 minutes. You live in Canada where you live. There's no post secondary education around me that you can teach you CG modeling. What should you do? online has everything you need um i would say go to polycount do, use the polycount wiki polycount.com and look at the wiki for polycount that's a really great place to start i can't link you because i'm not on youtube or anything like that but definitely look at the polycount wiki and uh you will be in heaven with that for sure because it's got all the information you need to know to get started with that Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break. Here, let me put this on, and uh, I'll be back to keep working on this guy right here. There we go. That's a good break break screen. Okay, um, get up, stretch, do your things, do your thingy things, and I will be back in about five minutes because I need to take a quick stretch, quick break, because again, these streams go on for four hours, so please bear with me, and I will be back and we will continue this and I will answer more questions, so if you have any questions, drop them in the chat while I'm gone, and give yourself a break of Reno! Give yourself a chance stream! Okay, BRB.
bit. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I'm good at embarrassing myself in front of 200 people. <laughs> um. So let's see. Let me get rid of the BRB. What's my level in understanding anatomy? Does it help? Yes, I study anatomy. I keep going back to it over and over again. I study different animals and just try to like do a whole bunch of different things. Look at different animals, different people. <laughs> and yeah, like I do I do studies and that does actually help a lot. It it's it's actually a core um, requirement if you want to be a character artist or a character concept artist or anything like that. Okay. This looks like one of your old teachers. She was mean. Oh no. <laughs> You're taking an eight hour break. <laughs> All right. See you little ginger. Enjoy destiny. Here is uh, some impos for, for um, here. I'm just like dropping in info where I can. Here we go. Drop, drop in more info. The stuff that Mord has been, the stuff that Mord's been giving me in chat. Just dropping it again. Oh no, I just, I definitely need to get better at anatomy. I always need to get. It's a never-ending, never-ending thing. Just constantly doing anatomy things. Okay, let's uh, have some fun here. Take all of this and merge it now. Salvador, yeah, it's uh here. I'll I'll give you guys that one too. That in. Oh my gosh, what I have noticed is the iPhone pen sucks at double clicking. Okay, here we go. Hi, Azen. So you meant general mammal anatomy? What? What? I'm so confused. I'm sorry, Royce. I don't understand that last comment. I'm married? What does that have to do with anything? And no, I'm not married. These guys down here. Definitely chunkier. Definitely longer.
Rhino X Triceratops, yeah. It's got that feel. Uh, when somebody asks I study anatomy, you, they might need them? Oh. No. Uh, we're talking in a completely artistic sense here. We're not, we're not doing any of that nonsense. Oh, no, 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 SD. Uh, I'm talking to somebody who was on, <laughs> on YouTube for making that comment. I know, for the next stream, I'll try and get um, the comments actually showing up on screen so you can see what I'm, I'm talking about. Hey, King's Letter, how are you doing? Want to follow me on Twitch? But it's showing some guy playing with Legos instead. That's because my channel is hosting that channel, that other channel. That's still my channel. It looks like a Vegeta with a really bad posture. <laughs> Am I like sad or something? Oh no. Oh no, I'm not always smiling. I must be so depressed because I'm not always smiling. You know how hard it is? I'm sorry. I'm snapping a little. But like, guys, do you know how hard it is to smile constantly for four hours straight while you're trying to work? I would... Like, that's actually going to make me crazy, so I'm not sad, I'm fine, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kind of like, chill, you know? You feel? <laughs> ah, jeez. All the good conversation from YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jeez, like, I don't know, man. Somebody coming up to you being like, are you depressed? Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not something that makes anyone feel good. Like, oh, great, I look like, I look like a sad person. I'm sorry, like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not offended, I'm just saying, guys. Like, I'm not, I'm not sad. Relax, okay? Relax. I've gotten that, I've gotten that, like, Five, six times tonight already. <laughs> hmm. Amazing how people can handle all the different chats while doing it. Yeah, it's like, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get better at it, but like, damn. Yes, yeah, smiling gives you wrinkles. How not to wrinkle. Do sculpting by mouse? I mean, you can if you want. I look suspiciously happy. <laughs> oh my god. Depressed and also defensive about asking about- You know what, Hugh? You know what? Get at me. <laughs> Man, you guys- You guys bring the sass out of me, I swear. 
He's testing me. You testing me. I'm telling you, you testing me. I do this every week. You testing me. Dressed appropriately, you put on pants when you feel like it. <laughs> Whatever. Permanent smile as wide as possible. It'd be freaking weird if I was sitting here like. <laughs> like, then you'd probably be like, okay, what's wrong with you? <laughs> nah. Very scary. I agree. I agree. I don't understand anybody who's like constantly asking girls to smile. <laughs>
eggs. A little more meat in the middle. More meat. More flesh for the flesh god. More booty for the booty god. <laughs> this thing is frego, yeah. And you got a rebirth of species. Uh, did I stop drawing? No, I haven't stopped drawing. I just draw a lot less frequently. I want to draw more. I definitely want to draw more. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Wayne. I agree. Totally fake focus, yes. Oh my gosh, if you guys- I swear, I'm gonna get so triggered by this chat saying I'm sad. I swear to- Woo! <laughs> What a sad looking rhino. <laughs> Imagine if you could type in accents. Ooh, yeah. That would be cool. And also, I probably would think that people would find it offensive. Somehow. <laughs> this dude is a result of a project to bring back rhinos from extinction, but instead caused a virus that mutated people into rhinozoids. That's actually not a bad premise. I mean, this 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 concept needs some work for something like that to actually make any sense. But yeah, <laughs> he's smiling like an idiot. Oh, free drag. You'd be out of the stream in thirty seconds. Yeah, if I was like smile like that. Ooh, Cupio, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> uh, which one is better, mouse or pen tablet? Definitely pen tablet. Yes, your tablet. You're gonna want to get a tablet for sculpting or any digital art. Uh, seen a monster from the movie The Ritual. Yes, I have. I actually, so the thing with The Ritual, I actually had like a gripe with it. I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a really well-made horror mo film that was just like, it was less campy and I felt like it actually tried to do something serious and scary scary, like not like, you know, super paranormal. Like, I mean, it was still, you know, not realistic, but it, 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 it felt creepy in a lot of things. And without saying spoilers, I just feel like the creature could have done with a little bit more mystery. That's all that I'm going to say about that, because I don't want to put spoilers. While doing streaming, you often find it hard to focus in the office unless you toss the headphones on and shut the world out. Well, I mean, if I were to actually hear my own voice constantly, then it would be really hard for me to do that. But because I have headphones on and I'm listening to music, it's like, it's just kind of like a muffled, like droning noise that I hear. So that kind of, it's like, it's weirdly like soothing because it doesn't actually feel like it's my voice. I just kind of feel like it's like this white noise when I talk. But if I take the headphones off, I have a really hard time just talking to the screen. I start getting like all like self-conscious and like weird about things. I don't know. It's strange. I have to have the headphones on as well. <clears throat> all right. No problem, Sirius. Have a really great time watching Jessica Jones. I haven't seen the new season. I hope it's good. Line in Mission Impossible 2 where the bad guy had to impersonate Tom Cruise's character and takes off the mask. He says, you know what the worst part was? Having to grin like an idiot every... <laughs> oh my gosh. Good luck with the rest of the stream. Yeah, and thank you. Have a great night. I wonder if Barbie had a perma frown. <laughs> you thought it was a bird at first? It's not a bird. Not everything I do is a bird. Also, hi, Play2D. Give him a name. Yeah, go for it. It's supposed to be a rhino. It's rhino inspired. It's got a rhino horn. The, the sculpting thing is really just like for anybody watching um, to kind of like jump in and do what they want to do. My best sculpt, my favorite sculpt, I don't really have one. Um, I don't really know what's my best sculpt. I can show you what my most popular one is on ArtStation, if that's what you mean. Um, my most popular sculpt from Art Station. Mm 
a beholder. I actually started a beholder like a long time ago and I just kind of like stopped doing it. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn all of this off. Yeah, so that's my po most popular one. So this owl. Right here. Am I listening to the same music uh, as you guys? Yeah, I am. It's just kind of um, the chill step stuff. The dragon sh uh, sculpt I showed a couple weeks ago. Oh, thank you. Reincarnation of a species that might make up for this. I know, it's so sad. Uh, hey, Coop. How are you doing? Pretending rhinos are talking here. Yeah. It looks like Devilman. Ah. Poly painting is a lot of fun. You should try it. Yeah, thank you, though. Owl isn't creepy enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everybody likes the owl. Everybody's, like, obsessed with this one. The, the thing is, I think the reason why I'm, like, not impressed with it is the fact that I, it, you know, sometimes you get, like, bouts of inspiration. You sit down and you do something in, like, a night or two. That was like this. <laughs> For me, I was just like, I really need to make an owl. And I just sat down one night and I just went at it. And I guess that's sort of why I'm like, yeah, but I didn't like spend, I don't know. I didn't like, my love wasn't there when I made it. <laughs> but thank you guys, I appreciate it. Um, I don't know why the material is like this. Hold on, maybe. I switch out. Oh my god. Master. Fill with just material. Material only. Yeah, there we go. That'll fix it. Watch the owl today on my art say Oh, cool, thanks. Um, actually, I if you go on my YouTube channel, I have uh, I have a time lapse of what I did of this. It's poly painted. It's poly painted. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, it's poly painted. Um, and then the final ended up looking... Okay, I'll show you guys what the final is. Uh, right here. That's the final. So, yeah, it's a paint over. But you can see that like, I have, I have like a time lapse right here. If I meet this. Wait. Yeah, so just goes through, sculpt the whole thing. I think I even do the poly painting in this one. Yeah, so you can check that if you're interested. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this rhino. Delete all.
Yeah, I was like Amadeus, the divine was working for me. <laughs> no, it was not. No. But I'm really glad you guys like it. Um, I enjoy using Substance Painter, but I also really enjoy using uh, ZBrush for poly painting. Actually, a lot of the time I do poly paints uh, as a base, and then I um, I bring that as a color map into uh, right back into Substance Painter, and I continue painting on top of that for professional stuff, like pipeline stuff. But for this stuff, it's not really, yeah. Oh my god, Coop. <laughs> no worries, Space Cookie. What happened? Wait, what? Make something. Yeah, no, no, no. No worries. No worries. Um. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep going. Let's see.
Future reference to ZBrush making history movie option would be the most effective method tutorial presentations, just saying. Uh, yeah, except that, like, I, I actually prefer to just do, like, a window capture um, with OBS. That's my preferred my preferred method. That that, that I showed you guys with the... Um, <clears throat> sorry. With the uh, owl... That was the first time I've ever tried, like, you know, doing anything, and I realized, like, quickly that that isn't the best way to do it, and I found that uh, doing it with, um, with OBS is actually more effective. So the other ones that I have on my YouTube channel, they're all done with, like, OBS. I gotta find where I saved this. I gotta save more. There we go. <sighs> Figure out anchor points and substance right now. Oh, doing some substance stuff. Alright, I missed a whole bunch. Yeah, it's a it's a fun pipeline pre drag. I, I like I would say that it's it's a lot of fun to work that way. Hey Ronnie, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, it's only ten thirty. We still have an hour and a half left. When making creatures that is not that don't exist in the real world, is it necessary to make the flow of muscles and like creatures that have in real life, or you can just imagine and create whatever comes to mind? Um, yeah, you want to study actual anatomy of human or of um, of animals and and humans, of course. And uh, just sort of like think about it in a way, you know, like how, how muscles work in general, um, where things attach, you know, how joints, which direction they bend and things like that. Because if you want something to be believable, you want to study that kind of stuff and kind of create your own characters based on the anatomy that you already know exists in real life. That's how you make like a believable character. Um, for this kind of stuff, my anatomy might not be 100%. Well, actually, I know it's not 100%, uh, because I am just going from my imagination and just from what I can recall. And it's a good exercise to do just to have fun, relax, let your imagination run wild sort of a thing. But if I wanted to take this guy further, if I wanted to actually make him like a concept or like a model that I would actually use in the pipeline, or you know have it presented on in a portfolio or to a client or whatever then i would absolutely absolutely want to reference and make it a stronger concept make it more believable right that would actually function but because this is just for fun i'm just kind of like going at it and working with shapes over everything else that's awesome lord samuel that's awesome Nice sound for working. Okay, cool. Dope. Feel like you're finally getting the hang of them. Anchor points? Oh, nice. <laughs> nice, right? How are you doing? You like that pose? Thanks. Look weird and natural if it didn't make mechanical sense. Yeah, definitely. No problem, Manoj. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you have a fantastic evening. That was dragged out. <laughs> 
I'm gonna drop in chat, um, I'll drop in chat the... Ooh, here we go. If you guys are interested in information, I dropped it in Twitch chat and I'll drop it in Facebook as well. Sorry YouTube, I don't have you I don't have you open, but you know. If you're interested in uh, in anything that I do, you could always follow me via the uh, the bar down right here, Creature and Character Concept Sculpting, Ashley Adams, and then my Twitch is right there. If you're interested. It's a really good answer, thank you so much. No problem, Shub, no problem. Rocking multiple chats, yeah, it's, it's a heck of a thing. Create miniatures, but you don't have the time to go all out on using ZBrush. You also have ZBrush cores, so you don't have all the other goodies. You don't need all the other goodies, though, if you're just making, um, you're, if you're doing, like, 3D print stuff, you could, you could definitely just use core to do that. I've seen lots of 3D print stuff come outside of, uh, come from core.
Uh, chunky guy here. Where's the YouTube link? Um, to watch this on YouTube? Uh, um, oh my goodness, hold on. Now you get, now you're just making me look at Max Logic thing. Okay, let's see. Ah, there it is. Yeah, here's the here's the YouTube link to watch on YouTube. If you wanted to watch on YouTube. Evening, D uh, Dawid. Also, for every, like, every, everybody in YouTube, there we go, now that I have it, now that I have it, uh, here. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh, okay, yeah, I can't send it on YouTube. Okay, whatever. You guys don't get it. <laughs> Hi, Ed, uh, Edward, Edward Droid. Edward Droid. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cool Twitch channel. This is the Pixelogic channel. This is not my channel. There's a whole bunch of different artists that stream here. This is not specifically my channel. So if you're interested in different artists doing their thing, uh, definitely check out this channel. Like, give it a follow. But if you're interested in me personally, you can see my stuff. Hello, Woo, hi! You see where my eyeballs are? My eyeballs, my seeing orbs, they're right here. Doing the seeing orb thing. That's my that's my Twitch channel right here. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, okay, let's see. Did I go to school for this? This particularly? No, this specifically? No, I did not. Hold on, one second, guys. I need to get something. Ugh, sorry. You enjoy horror. Yeah, no, like, I mean, I think it's, I think it's totally cool. Follow it on Twitter. Can't wait to see more of my work. Thank you so much, Nika. Like, yeah, I think, I think horror is totally fine for people who are just starting out, actually. Anybody know if you can use noise generator to affect multiple layers in Substance Painter? Um, you can, like, I, I'm pretty sure you can copy like, kind of the same as uh, Photoshop, you can copy layer styles, like, it's the same sort of thing in some sense, I'm pretty sure. Hey, San Diego, how are you doing? How are you doing, my man? My dude? Man, I'm saying that again, and I know that people called me out for it the other time that I did it, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm saying my dude, my man, my guy. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing, San Diego? Guys, if you don't know San Diego, he's, a, he's an amazing uh, 3D artist as well. You should definitely check out his stuff. San Diego, if you want, you can drop your link in um, in the Twitch chat. I don't have access to that right at this particular moment. Uh, I had YouTube videos of my scopes time lapses recorded in Pixel... Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. I, th I thought you meant you were looking for the Pixelogic stuff. Um, yes, I do have a YouTube channel. Hold on, give me a second. Wow, I'm going a million miles an hour. One second. Um, lots of stuff going on here. Go to my YouTubes. My YouTubes. Hold on. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. All right, here we go. Here ye are. And for people in, uh, here you go. You can also, here you go. Yatub. <laughs> yeah, I know, you can't put links. Is Ashley uh, A. Adams? Yes. Yes, that is me. Q. I do have a middle name starting with A. You'll follow those. Nice. 
Welcome. Used to be way into Max and Maya, but mm, went subtle when you can't make it. Yeah, I, I understand that, Mav. It's pretty difficult. Always use a mix for pure organic. We'll start ZBrush for more hard surface. You'll start in Maya, make the base mesh, and move to ZBrush. Ah, that'll be fun. It's a good, uh, good workflow. Follow my channel. Thank you so much, my bro. <laughs> Anchor points are the solution for noise in multiple layers. Oh, okay. That's what they're called. Okay, so I haven't actually tried out the new substance yet. I gotta get on that. I really do. For some music for soldiers. I'm sorry we don't have any Katy Perry in stock. San Diego, and we don't have any tacos. We need more tacos. <laughs> I need more tacos in my life. <laughs> Yeah, no worries, no worries, no worries. No worries, you seem to use Dynamesh as much as other sculptors you saw on this stream. You kind of prefer to take your basic forms to limit as far as resolution concern. Yeah, I like to do that because then I get to get a whole bunch of uh, crazy artifacts happening, right? Like, I don't care about anything. I, I like the artifacts. I actually work with the artifacts. You prefer dude bro? All right, okay. Yeah, some taquitos would be nice too. <laughs> Thank you, Scotty. Hi, Kiss Cat. How long have I been sculpting for? I have been sketching, sculpting, and animating creatures for a while now and want to hopefully work on films and games. My work oh, thank you so much! I've been sculpting probably for around four years. I'm not 100% exactly the number. It's around that, give or take some. Three to four years, somewhere in there. Something really killed the little guy. Not friendly to very small studios and freelancers. Yeah, I know, I know. You prefer bro dude? Okay, I'll call you up. Hey, what's up my bro dudes? How's up, my bro dudes? <laughs> my bro dude. You don't recognize my bro dude? I, you know what? <laughs> dude man is better? Okay, you know, I'm gonna call you all my little sissies. <laughs> hey girls! Hey gals! What up? What up, my girlies? What up, sissies? <laughs> Hi, sisters! <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> Would you guys recommend ZBrush Core for a beginner that just wants to create concept creatures and make some scenes or, or another tool? Yeah, definitely. ZBrush Core would be great for that. When you go into some company for modeling for character gun environment, do they ask for some degree, of course, or is it just talent, skill, and experience? Yeah, talent, skill, and experience. Um, if you have a killer portfolio, whatever, to your degree, but your degree will help you getting a visa if you're going to another country. Do other art willing to learn stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sissy bro sounds awesome. <laughs> What's up, my girlies? What up, my ladies? How you going, chicas? What's new? Alright, I feel like I'm doing some head stuff. Hmm, what should I do? What should I do? I actually just realized like how how much anxiety I probably give people when I start sculpting like this like oh my god there's so many artifacts what are you doing I, I normally don't even realize it when I'm doing it I'm just like whatever I can just dynamish it out after Bros, <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
<laughs> Z <Ze> girls. <laughs> that just sounds like a bad German accent. You're a sissy anyway, but not a girly. It's 2018. You beat everything. Sissy bro. Pixelogic and amazing one-time cost. They provide updates for a very long time. I agree! That was aggressive. I'm sorry. I agree. He looks down. He stabs himself in the chest. He doesn't look down. She have puncture marks all over his chest. You know what? Okay. You know what? You know. You know. You make a valid point. And I wasn't even really thinking about it. I... We change it. We change it. Okay? So Hugo is happy. That's why... We change it. Because Hugo... Hugo was sad. Hugo was sad, so we give him the appointers. And... It works, so I ain't mad. That's where he hangs his laundry. Meaning to ask, would it be wise for you to focus on- Ooh, ooh, whoa! I realize I just missed so many comments, okay. Hey Zenato, I've been meaning to ask you, would it be wise for you to focus on just characters if you want to be a character, humans, creatures, or do I need to know how to do environments and other things as well? Um, if you knew how to do everything, you're probably gonna get a generalist job. If you focus, then you're going to get a focus job. The thing is, character art in general is very saturated. There's so many aspiring character artists out there that, um, you have to really, really be a good, like, you need to really, like, push it, you know? Like, or you get lucky, like I <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say if you're worried about your competition, then branch out a little bit. But if you're like really serious about one thing in particular, then just like go all in in that. There you go, copy. You identify as a taco? Good. Good. You should. Identify as a taco. Do it. <laughs> I'm doing a bit of my workflow and outlandish methods. Inspired you to do this odd but fun marine creature. I just wanted to thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I would say my methods are outlandish. You're calling me a savage. <laughs> Rotato, do you even... <laughs> oh my god. You're identifying as triggered. Well, you know, you do you. Be lucky and smile. Oh, there it is again. Ooh, Hugo, you know. Are you sad? Are you sad, Hugo? For I did not bring home the river and sky.
Where do I work? I don't work anywhere right now. I just work for myself, actually. Um, I was working at an animation studio in Toronto. Um, I'm in Montreal right now, but I was working from home for them for a little bit. I was in studio for the other time, uh, working on an animated feature film, which is not announced yet, so I can't really talk about it, but it's supposed to come out this year, but we'll see. <laughs> And now that my contract is done, I'm just kind of chilling and focusing on my own art and raising my puppy. I'm just trying to, you know, live a little bit of life. Just relax, play some games, and then get back to it after a while. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. I'm not in like a rush to get another studio job immediately, but if another opportunity presents itself, I'm all there. The dog. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Monty Bear. My little Monty Bear. My little bunny bear. He's been my life for the past two months. And another foreseeable, hopefully 14 or so <laughs> years. So, chiseled creature, let's see, what do we got? We got some teeth stuff here. This stuff. I think I'm gonna do, um, insert mesh primitive, I'll do some capsule stuff. Yeah, I've done some freelance stuff. Um, have I found streaming on Twitch when it comes- How have I found streaming when it comes to art-related content and finding your voice as an artist marketing personal and versus commercial art? I think Twitch is amazing in terms of like getting your stuff out there. It's really hard at first to get noticed. Um, ArtStation, the fact that they had the streaming tab for a while was actually very, very helpful, but they kind of removed that now. So it is a little bit more difficult, especially since Twitch doesn't cater to the creative crowd. But more and more YouTube, um, like massive YouTube stars are starting to migrate over to Twitch, which some people on Twitch might think, well, ew, gross, like there's like Vine toxic stars coming to Twitch. But you think about all of the people from YouTube that are actually now migrating over to Twitch and that will start to filter into the creative side as well. So it's only gonna get bigger and it's just gonna keep growing. Um, so I would say that, yeah, it, Twitch is a great way to get your stuff out there as long as you're marketing it on, you know, your other social medias and you just post a lot online. That's really it. Also, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit like quiet right now. I have a bit of a headache, so I'm gonna try and just focus for a little bit um, without talking too much for like the next few minutes to see if it like kind of just subsides.
really sorry again, guys, that I'm like not talking right now. I'm just trying to let this headache disappear. So that I can make it through the last hour. Kind of the same way. Yeah, I know. Majority of my models, my majority of my models are definitely organic. You want to apply to be a modeler for ZBrush Live? Yep. Yeah. If you go to their Twitch channel, um, you look in the info panels, they actually have it in there. You can get an application form and then send it to the email address that they have in that form. And they'll review your portfolio and, and then if you're, if they have room, They'll so give you an interview, and then if you pass the interview, then you're in. Pixel Dread. 
get a conversation going. Oh, okay, no worries, no worries. Hey, Dead, how are you? Yeah, anybody coming in that's new, I'm so sorry. I'm a little quiet now because uh, I've got that headache. Ginger? Yeah, I just took an Advil like about mm, 20 minutes ago, so it should be kicking in soon. Yeah, I'm one of those poor souls that's <laughs> very headache prone, so I I get migraines a lot. Get um they call silent migraines most of the time. Starts with uh like these basically you see like auras, like it's it basically it blocks out your vision. You start having like auditory hallucinations and nonsense like that. It's no fun. This one, this one's just a stupid headache. Not migraine related. What valuable sculpting tutorials online can I recommend regarding creature sculpting? Um, hmm, creature sculpting. Creature sculpting tutorials. To be honest with you, I haven't really taken any creature sculpting tutorials online. I, I know Flipped Normals actually has um, some interesting stuff. You can go and check out Flipped Normals. They're uh, VFX dudes, the two of them. They're really cool. Good am I at Ritapo? Good enough to work on films and TV series. So I have in the past. Yeah, the music is pretty low on my end. Reference on Pinterest? Oh, you guys are talking to each other. Gotcha. You have a question. As game artists scale 100%, no. Or do you have to leave that to designers? Um, if you're a character artist, I mean, like, scale, it does matter, but... You know, I, I'd say, um, you know, whatever you end up getting that works in game, try to stick with that. A lot of the time, uh, you know, for productions, you're given some sort of like a base mesh to work off of that's already been pre-approved in like the layout or in in engine or whatever. And that scaling is always going to like go and change, you know, based on like rigging needs and also animators, blah, 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 blah. So it's a constant changing, <clears throat> constant changing process. And you just have to be aware of it as a character artist and work with, uh, work with riggers uh, on that kind of stuff. R well, riggers and, um, and the layout people and game designers. So Whatever it happens to be at that moment. Whichever you're working, film or games. 
why don't I give my characters a T pose? Um, I like to sculpt it in a relaxed pose to try and get that uh, feeling of, like that natural feeling. Um, sculpting things in T pose like really doesn't help the character at all. You could always put something in T pose later, but you know, if you wanna if you wanna really like sell your concept, it's nice to actually have it in some sort of a relaxed pose or like an actual character pose of some kind um, to show to your directors or whoever is approving your models. Because if it's all like stiff, then it's really really difficult for uh, a lot of people to understand what the character is going to be like. can mess up the underarms but that's the thing like you're always gonna have to re um, re-sculpt certain things when you're doing posing anyways so I wouldn't be afraid of that if I were you I'd be afraid of getting stuck in a forever loop of disapproval for your characters and that's what I would be afraid of messing up the armpits is nothing like the seven ring of hell, which really, you know, a lot of people think it's one thing, but I can tell you what that is. I can tell you that the seventh ring of hell <laughs> is getting stuck in a feedback loop for a character doing 20, 30 iterations because they're not happy with what the character looks like and then going right back to the first one <laughs> after you pose it. That is the seventh ring of hell, so... To avoid that, try and display as much of the character in the sculpt as possible and worry about the technical stuff later because I'm telling you right now, you do not want to get stuck in that ring. You don't. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. It's actually very frustrating. <laughs> And we've all been there. 
all of us professional artists. The infinity disapproval loop, exactly. Is there an eighth ring? Maybe, maybe like getting, I don't know. Well, I don't, I actually don't know what the eighth ring is. when your hands are too big. What do you use for retapo? I usually retapo. I, I retapoed in um, retapoed in uh, uh, Maya. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. The headache is is kind of making me fuzzy. Um, yeah, I, I did my retapo in Maya. Actually, have I thought about working for MPC? Ah, uh, yeah, I've thought about it, but I've never really put my put my apl application in there. Uh, just restarted a character because the guy said make an android didn't say what type oh man got you yeah yeah see when you're starting something it, the best the best thing to have is as much direction as possible <laughs> like just ask them like what are you going for what kind of character do you want like what do you want it to like take inspiration from you know just try and get as much out of your client as possible do I work off of a Cintiq? Nope. I use a one of these guys. Intuos Pro Medium. It's about ZBrush and environment art. If you're taking textures, check out the tape. I'll see Oh, there you go. Nice pre-drag. Making sure your hands aren't too big doing dishes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't usually work in perspective until, like, later on. 
Like, I, I usually just, like, check back and forth. I don't find there to be a need for that. The, like, the whole thing for me is, um, is I'm getting, I'm getting shapes, interesting shapes. And silhouette. But I can show you that this turning into perspective, like, there's, like, if you have a solid model, it shouldn't matter, right? Like, you, there's not really, like, any difference here. And to be honest with you, um, perspective mode, I usually, if I am going to check it, I ch turn it down to something like 25. Because that's a little bit more accurate. <clears throat> because uh, ZBrush's perspective mode actually isn't, it's not like a real camera. It doesn't, uh, it, it kind of fakes it, right? Which it works for for getting the idea of what the perspective is going to look like but if you bring it into maya and try and match it with zbrushes you're always going to get some kind of a discrepancy so it, when it comes to like camera matching and things like that it's actually if you want to check perspective in zbrush it's nice to do it with just a subtlety like this um or like you know matching matching concepts and things like that try and do it subtle but i wouldn't really I wouldn't really like do it on like an intense um, perspective. I know there are artists that work with intense perspective, but I just feel like it'll be easier for you to get your proportions and your silhouette down pat without uh, without without perspective on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you wanna you wanna really understand form, practice form, um, because once you've got your form down pat, you know anything is possible. The world's your oyster. Alrighty, let's see. What can we do here? I guess he needs like a tail. Remember kids, don't put the tail right in the butt crack. This isn't a butt plug that we're talking about. This is a tail. Tails continue from the spine, from the base of the spine. So don't put it in the butt crack. I see a lot of people putting tails in butt cracks. Don't do that. That's not, no, you don't want that. We don't want butt crack tails. No butt crack tails. It's not a butt plug. Okay, there we go. All right, see you, Joel. Have a great evening. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, what render software do I use to render my sculpts? I use Keyshot, actually, just for conceptual purposes. Thank you, TE. I appreciate it. Where do I get the music for this? Um, this is on YouTube. I can post the 
me. There you go. Without you, I know. <laughs> Am I switching between brushes with hotkeys? Yeah, my one through zero hotkeys I actually, or one through the zero keys I actually made into hotkeys for my brushes. I give him a horse tail. Yeah, that's pretty much it. He's got an or like an ox tail. No problem, Spencer. Uh, I think up something already, but can you pretty much not body with lots of ginger? Oh yeah. All right, yeah. I'll try and get my. I'll try and look get some ginger next time I'm at this, the shop. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I kind of like dipped off there, guys. I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people kind of like dipped out because I'm not talking as much. Appreciate you guys sticking around, <laughs> even though I'm kind of working slow now. We've got a half an hour left and then I'll be out of your hairs. No, you don't want butt crack. No butt crack tails. No pooping out long tail pheasants. Exactly. You don't want to. Like it doesn't make any sense. Don't put tails in butt cracks. <laughs> oh my God. Hi, Josra. Or is your name Jose or Josie? Renderman will have GPU solution by the end of this year. Ooh, fancy. All right, this guy. Yeah, so Diego is still here. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, environment artist who use 3D, you can search for Stefan Wutha. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, Massage Cusiera, yes. Aiton Zana, yes. And Jonas Duro, yes. Max Burnham, yeah, yeah, yeah. Burn, Bur, Burman. I can never, I always say Burnman. Burnham. I don't know why. Burman. Yes. What the hair is it, is it acceptable to make hairs out of hair and fur or just make it with poly? Yeah, you can make it with uh, fiber mesh. That's what you're looking for. You can do fiber mesh and grooming. Uh, is it a fully animated pro quality cutscene enough to land a job at a major company? If you animated a pro quality cutscene, then yes. If it's, if it's animated to that extent, then yes. Thank you so much, Jose. You're going to bed? No problem, Noah. Have a great sleep. Thanks for stopping by. I didn't define the booty at all. <laughs> like, look at this. That is, that is sad. <laughs> Boy, you got a sad booty. Oof. Fill that in. Show them what your mama gave you. Thank you. 
bro quality cutscene? Uh, well, you know, bro quality cutscenes are very specific to, um, to bro identifying individuals. So I would say be cautious on that one. You know? Ooh, get that. That is too much badoink a doink. Too much booty. Too much junk in your trunk. My man. My dude. Alexander, how are you? How's it going? Work in those monster cheeks. I know, thick. <laughs> Very important for game ready environment pieces. Optimization. Yes, yes. Pre drag knows what he's talking about with that. He can change his name to fit your speech pattern. <laughs> Yeah, he needs those squats. Just a time for the creature butt. Oh, yes, Mava. Ooh, you you know when to come in here. You know when it's the party time. No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> the fact that you have so many butt emotes on Twitch. Look at that booty. You need to be extra thick. Thick, 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 thick. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to get banned on Twitch? Ready to get banned on Twitch? <gasps> Is that nipples? <laughs> He's got them Laura Croft nips. Oh, thanks, Alexander. Glad to hear you're doing well. Just started the past week in streaming your stuff. You'll do it free time. Yeah, no, no, no. It's awesome that you're streaming stuff, uh, Santiago. Guys, if you don't know, go check out Santiago's uh, stream page. Start doing the thing. Let's see. Oh my god, goat skin! <laughs> the moment it's in Spanish? Yeah, but that's okay. People, There's lots of Spanish speakers in here. Is there are butt emotes on Twitch? Yeah, there are. Of course there are. Depends on who you're actually subbed to. Some people got lots of butt emotes. Nips, I know. I'm gonna get banned. Hey, goat, you don't know that. You don't know that. 
you know? He's a grower, not a shower. Wow, did I just say that? English speaking disadvantage, just get it art. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of people just kind of like want to see the process, right? I actually don't know many people who are here because of me <laughs> specifically. It's just sort of like, what are you gonna make today? Also, smile. You're not smiling enough. Smile. <laughs> What are you gonna make? Smile. What are you gonna make? Smile. <laughs> Sorry, I sound very salty. here for you. Oh good. Thank you, Rai. You're one person. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just, ooh, 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 I'm gonna get you, boy. I'm gonna get you. You did not just tell me to smile more. <laughs> no. Thank you so much. How are you doing? <laughs> Savage. No, right. I appreciate you. I do. I was kidding. I was kidding. Is it just the joke, bro? It's just a prank, bro. It's just a joke. I just keep trying to make this chunkier, you know? I just want him to be like a- I want him to be a chunky monkey. Chunky, chunky monkey. Because typically I do sort of, uh... I do, like, slimmer characters. More... 
Um, like on these streams, I, I, I like to do really uh, almost like aerodynamic. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, can we make him chunky though? Nips can cut diamonds, I know. <laughs> They're literally like one, one, one poly just, just pulled back. Laura Croft style from, uh, from old school, old school Tomb Raider. Too long since you watch any Harry Potter. Man, yeah, I haven't seen Harry Potter movies in a long time. What? <laughs> what dead end? Oh my god, what? Wait, wasn't it a rhino? I mean, it was at one point. It was rhino inspired. You say this is modeled after a human anymore or less, as far as the muscle groups go. Yeah, until he gets down into like the hoof legs. <laughs> And those nipples are offending you? You know what? Get triggered, San Diego. Get triggered. I know you wish you had nips as nice as this. <laughs> okay? I know you wish you had big pizza areolas. Thank you, Shmabla. I like it too. I like the, the music as well. It's just really chill. I feel like you're getting indoctrinated. The Reapers got you. <laughs> nips. Your Nips comment got auto modded. Oh my god, drummer. Every single time you come in at the perfect time. Too hot for Twitch. <laughs> Flapjacks, yeah. You wish, you wish you had that. Here, you know, if you guys are getting so offended, let me make, let just, let me make it better. Let me fix this. Let me fix this for you. Let me get that for you. Okay, watch. There we go. It's perfect now. All right, now we can continue. Yeah, I know, right? You guys love that. It's the good stuff. That's the, that's the good stuff right there. That's what that is. <laughs> no, you're the best pre-drag. No, you. No, you. <laughs> Imagine some combos and executions with the... These, these nips are made for stabbing. You guys were concerned about him having stabbing holes because of his headpiece up here with his chest? Nah, boy, you gotta worry about his nipples. He's called the Impaler. The nightclub down the street. Or poor Rhino Street. The Impaler would get you. So 
So you better bring your ID. People have said they see him at barbecues. He's really he's really great at barbecues because nobody needs to buy the shish, shish kebab sticks. Just use his nips. Right over the fire. Right over the hot charcoal. Just, just the charcoal, the barbecue. Just a man and his nips and his barbecue, you know? Some good stuff. Hey, Jackal, how you doing, girl? Shirt shopping would be such a pain. For the shirt. <laughs> I've done an elephant with wings. Oh, darn, I missed the opportunity. <laughs> the schwing sound when I did. Schwing, schwing, schwing. Schwing. <laughs> Drek the Impaler. <laughs> Needle boobs. Old skewer nips. Do I rep anatomy anymore? Absolutely when I'm doing something serious, yeah. Like if, I, when, if I'm doing like studies and stuff. For stuff like this, like nah, I'm not really repping anything. I'm just going off of what I already know. But if I want to learn anatomy and strengthen what I already know, then absolutely I will be using reference. But this is just for funsies. So some of the anatomy is off, but I mean, you know, again, for funsies. Probably try everything. <laughs> Clearly anatomically correct, I know. <laughs> Pepperoni. <laughs> We're all a bit mental. I know. Hey Dominic. Hey Scotty. Just a little mental. I mean like if you're if you're doing this kind of thing for hours on end every single day, you get a little psycho. I'm not ashamed. See, it's even a conversation piece for everybody. I feel like it's a win. I feel like needle nips is a win for everybody in this chat. That's what I think. <laughs> I get a message from Pixelogic. Um, I'm sorry, but you're not representing the brand very well <laughs> with these needle nips. <laughs> I didn't actually get that. They're very chill. They're very chill. But now that I said that, I might get it. <laughs> we'll see. High frequency details and adding skin flesh to a character. Do it using layers. Um, because then you can always adjust how strong it is. strong character here. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'm getting loopy. Yeah. 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 Like, combination of, like, headache, lack of sleep because of construction in my building, and an Advil. Here I am, boys! Here I am, sissies! Here I am. Take me as I am. Take me in my needle nips. I just appreciate your alliteration needle nips. <laughs> Here's legend of old skewer nips. Oh my gosh, I think the amount of times I've said nips on this stream is just criminal. I think we're all like five years old that we find these sort of things really, really funny. We're all five. It's good mentally, you know? You're <laughs> killing your attention, good. Focus. Focus! 
focus. <laughs> oh shoot. Wait, here we go. There we go. Wait, wait. Just put it in perspective mode. There it is. There we go. Wait, hold on. Seems to be traumatic. level up the nips. <laughs> no, on my art station fish. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I definitely need to um, give the rest of the body some like hair details and stuff. Like I, doing something in full detail to balance out the head, definitely it, like I would need to add more down here for interest sakes. But in terms of like the shapes and stuff, I think we're pretty solid. Stop me doing the live because the nipples are too high. I know, I know. What else? What? But it doesn't. Wait, hold on. What else do I use ZBrush for? Um, that's a good question. I feel like I only make nips. You're giving me an existential crisis here. Like I literally only make nips. I don't know, man. What do I do? What do I do? What else is there? No, like actually, I use ZBrush for character sculpting for concepts, and I also use ZBrush for um, <clears throat> doing base textures sometimes uh, before sending it to Substance, and I use ZBrush for uh, for creating characters for production as well. So, three things, but the most important, nips. I am not going to actually integrate these into the character design because it's already there. <laughs> It'll crack the lens, yeah. Hi, 3D of Tom. <laughs> Lucky son. Hey, Rowan. Can you give a brief explanation of sculpting characters for a game? Um, I don't have like tons of time right now. I'm just gonna catch up with the comments. You can catch me the next stream if you want, but there's lots of other artists on the Pixelogic channel that talk about game creation, so you should definitely check out the Pixelogic channel. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a quick flyby of where I am, where I'm located. Hi! Do you see my seeing orbs and what my seeing orbs are looking at right over here? No nips. No nips, just eyeballs, just eyeballs, right down here. Yes, you see this? Boop, 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 boop. This is me. So you can actually get me right here. Twitch.tv slash A underscore cubed. A cubed is me. So you can check that out if you're interested. But yeah, give Pixlogic a follow as well because other artists uh, stream on this channel. <laughs> no, you're the best sheep. This is why you come to the Pixelogic stream. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many comments! Um, we'll use ZBrush for bikini behaves and creatures scary nips. <laughs> there you go, that's all you need it for. When am I gonna stream next? I stream here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. EST. Um, and then on my channel, I stream every Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST or about that. Sometimes 9 p.m. PST on or EST, sorry, on my channel. First thing they'll do to teach you is Pusher Studios nip designs. Yeah, we need nip designs. All right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just put those back. I'm gonna just, there we go. Shh! Holy Batman, those nipples! Oh my goodness, boy! All right. Sculpting pays a lot more than painting. No, like it, it just like, no, I don't know. I don't really know. I know as a modeler, I wasn't being paid very well. Um, 
I kind of lived like a hobo for a while, <laughs> but not a hobo, but I was like not going out and doing things. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to make like a little, a little bit of like a turn around here. There he goes. There's our guy. When will I be live again? I'm live here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. EST and on my channel, I am live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST. 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 Not PSD. EST. Um, again, you can get me right over there. I will uh, copy and paste the info for you guys one more time. Hold on. Paste infos in Facebook, copy and paste infos in here. There we go. I can't copy and paste it in, in, uh, in YouTube. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thanks, everybody. If you're interested in joining my Discord, feel free. Um, it's kind of ridiculous in there sometimes, but you know, so is my stream. <laughs> And I, uh, yeah, I definitely do just shut down after stream because, again, it's been like four hours of talking and a lot of the time I, I am pretty prone to like migraines and headaches, so, that, yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, hopefully we get to do some more stuff next week. Follow me, follow Pixelogic. If you like ZBrush, give uh, the 45 day free trial a look-see. You can get that on the Pixelogic site. And uh, yeah, join me for more silliness. Love you guys. Peace. Also, beware of the skewer nips. Always keep your eyes peeled so they don't get impaled by the impaler. You don't want this. It's industry standard. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.